Great morning, holy brothers! Thank you so much for joining us on our pathway to peace inside the Garden of Peace on page 262 for following along. Today's lesson will be called Existence's Essence. Yes. The need to feel cherished. My wife also explains why women are so particular about their honor. Any slight to this. And when a husband honors his wife, however, it is a sign that he cherishes her, that he loves her, that he's committed to her, that he deeply values her. Honor is the source of a woman's vibrancy and her joy, her happiness. Every slight to her honor drains her of exactly that. That is why it's so hard for a woman to forgive a violation to that honor. The pain goes very deep and stays with her such a long time. Husbands don't understand why their wives can't just turn the page, forget about the past. You know, if I did something to her, you know, fine. She should forget. If she does something to me, you think I remember it? You think I even remember what I did this morning? Forget a week ago, a month ago, a year ago, 10 years ago? They bring up stuff from the past like elephants. They never forget. The littlest things that we would just gloss over and say, why are you making such a big deal of something so small? It's irrelevant. It happened so long ago. What? What are you carrying that with you? Why are you bringing that up now? It has nothing to do with anything going on here. Because it's so vital to her honor, to her essence of who she is, that the slight scars her. And it's going to stay with her. And she can look at that every single time and know that you caused her that pain. So many arguments in the home stem from the wife's need to feel loved, to feel cherished. A husband must know this need is just part of nature that God implanted inside the woman and she cannot choose to be another way she doesn't just act like a man because you want her to be your buddy this is the way god programmed her this is the makeup of her being you cannot avoid it you cannot undermine it knowing this he'll have compassion for his wife he'll want to understand when she's in pain to judge her favorably and give her exactly what she needs all the time because this is who she is you're not going to change a woman, because that's what a woman is. Men are different than a woman. Stop trying to think that just because you are logical in your mind that she is supposed to, can act that way. It'll never work. You're going to keep butting heads and keep making fireworks and explosions in your home. The essence of woman. Rabbi ben Sion Abishol, again, I've messed, I've messed memory, writes, do not think that men and women were created with the same characteristics. There's a fundamental, deep difference between them. Knowing that will save you so much unnecessary anger at her. The main force at work in a woman is her feelings, her emotions. Whereas in a man, his brain, his intellect, he thinks with that. The difference that separates them in everything they do. Buying clothes is a good example. Husbands are amazed at how their wives make such a big deal about what they're going to wear. But a wife's appearance is tremendously important to her. You understand? Like when my daughters wake up in the morning and they go to get dressed on Shabbos. I've said that before. My second to oldest, seven outfits without fail. Whatever she comes down with, I know she's going to go up another six more times. You can tell she looks awesome, she looks perfect, it's the right clothes for the weather, it's the trend of the style of the day, whatever it might be. No, no, she doesn't feel comfortable going back up. Me, watch your black pants, done, finished. How easy it is to, to, not to have to think about what you have to put on in the morning. So many guys make their minds into women. Oh my gosh, I don't know what color I should wear, how is it looking, is it too long, too short, too baggy, too skinny. What, what are you doing? Who are you trying to impress? You think anybody actually cares how you're looking this morning? But go shower, smell decent, brush your teeth, put on clothes, and get out the door. Yeah, you look great in anything. <laughs> you look gorgeous. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> the measure says a woman <clears throat> wants a decorated home and beautiful clothes more than she wants to eat fat and calves. What you think you want in your stomach is how she wants to look on an everyday basis. Women have different preferences to men. Men need to recognize this reality and understand their wives and respect them for it. A wife loves to have a beautifully decorated home. Interior decoration, home layout, furniture, arrangement, pictures, decorations, 
They mean so much to her. And the husband doesn't interfere and just praises his wife's good taste. Yes, honey, I think that's an amazing idea. The bedroom would look great with pink walls and yellow polka dots. There's little squiggly lines you have. Wow, I wish I would have thought of that. How amazing. If I wake up every day to see that, it would make my morning. You are so perfect in what you pick out. She takes great satisfaction in her home and is motivated to continue taking good care of it and talking about it and showing you how wonderful it is. This in turn brings tranquility to every single member of your house. On a deeper level, the manner in which a wife decorates the home represents an adornment of the divine presence in your home. You hear that? The spirituality level is that barometer. Since the home of a happy wife is likened to a sanctuary of the divine presence, where he will rest and bring down God's glory. Women do not function well with time frame limitations. A study showed that it's common for women to be up to 45 minutes late, longer than men for appointments. A husband who's not aware of this is going to get drawn into so many unnecessary arguments. How many things on Instagram have you seen where it shows a woman getting ready for six hours and the guy is like already out the door? Where the heck is my wife? What's she doing? Makeup, going, putting on her blush, changing her outfits, going to the bathroom, putting on another set of layers. What, what are you doing? A husband who's not aware that a wife works like this, guess what? When she's late, what's he going to do? What's he going to do? Freak out, argue with her, yell at her, complain against her. What is going on? Why are you not here on time? He can't understand. When his wife is late, he's going to get angry. Now he's going to get upset and he's going to grumble. How the heck long did it take you to get ready and get out the door? I told you we were supposed to be out by 5 o'clock. Now it's 5.45. Why can't you understand the concept of time? If you need to get ready, fine. Take an hour earlier and then be done by the time we need to leave. What, where's the disconnect? Where's the lack of the brain cells going into what you need to do? Hey, You're mean, always late. You're always late. Men are like this sometimes. Yes, men there can be. some pretty boys who uh, want to... Again, because they are becoming more what? Women. They're more feminine. Many guys can take on women characteristics, especially nowadays. And you'll see it coming out in these aspects of what are more likely to be women traits and characteristics than guys. Yeah, yeah, We're not yeah, saying everybody, but it's a general for, trait. Like, 20 minutes until they get it right. It's, it's madness. They thought they'll be right. Oh, I'll just comb my hair once and it'll look perfect. What reality are you living in? It's going to take you 20 minutes to do the same thing. No fail without fail every single time is how long it takes. But when a husband understands, okay, this is the wife's nature, he makes up to fix an earlier time for his wife. To, okay, we need to be out to do at 4 o'clock. Then when she's ready by 5 o'clock, and that's when you really want her to go out, perfect. Save yourself the trouble. So tell her we need to be ready by 4. And so listen, if you actually... I really need to be ready by 5. And if you were actually out to do it at 4, great. You'll spend more time with her. You'll be able to chill on your phone, whatever it might be. But at least you won't be late. Mm -hmm. But listen, even if you are late, stop getting mad about it. Stop getting angry about it. Just know this is the reality. Who runs the world? You or God? Very nice. Man plans... God laughs every single time, especially when it comes to your wife. Because if you're not recognizing the way that she's functioning and working, you're the moron. You're the silly fool. And then you're going to get upset about the fact that it's your problem and you're going to take it out on her? Stop it. Stop it. A man can freshen up in next to no time. A woman needs considerably longer. A husband must not complain about how long it takes his wife to get ready ever. The female characteristic of working slowly and thoroughly and clearly and methodically is mentioned as early as our teacher, the Meiri, the medieval Talmud commentator, writes, women work very slowly. Simple words. Even the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah 32.9, referred to women as being leisurely. Take their time. They want to do, they get ready at their own pace. When they feel <coughs> they're ready to go to a kiddush on Shabbos, tell them, okay, let's, let's be there. By 11.20, leave the house by 11.15. You think she's going to be ready at 11.15? Don't, don't put it in your head that she'll be ready at 11.15. Then you won't be mad when she doesn't get ready at that time. You're the one who creates your own problems, your own restrictions, your own restraints. Let that go, and don't be selfish about it. This is the way it's going to be. Many women, especially 
in their first stages of marriage are attached to their parental home. It seems to the young husband that she doesn't want to be alone with me. Why, why is she always stuck to her mother, to her, her parents' house? Why is she always clinging there? Why is she always wanting to go there? What's going on? You think that she doesn't love you? It's not so. Maybe her nature. The Torah says, Therefore a man will forsake his father and his mother to cleave to his wife. Voracious. Look it up. 2.24. Does it say that a woman forsakes her parents? Nope. Not in the Torah. Because that's not what happens. A man lets go of his parents and cleaves to his wife. A woman is always calling her mom. And my, my wife called my mother-in-law yesterday after something we spoke about. We decided together. And she discussed it with her mother. And then she Man. comes back to me. Totally different conversation. Why the heck did you have to involve your mother? Leave her alone! Stop it! We have something going on. And now she comes in and undermines everything I just spoke to you about. And that's the reality. And if Man. you get mad about that, you get insulted about that, you're dead. Not only is she going to be mad at you, then she'll take her mother's side more than you. All right, so let's say that happens. She Many, uh, does that ever happen? Of course it happens. All the time. I don't know. I don't know. Definitely do behind closed doors. But <laughs> so what do you do at that point? Do you just say, okay, fine, let's do what your mother says? Pretend that she never spoke to her mother. Pretend that God dropped an idea in her head. And now she's speaking. We respect her. This is what God wants to do. This is what God wants. And don't dare think that it came from her mother. Don't pretend her mother-in-law didn't exist in this conversation, and then you'll have no problem being mad at her. When you start to put blame and start to accuse and start to think, you're way in trouble. She'll, she's never going to put her mother down and try to favor you. This is where she comes from. We have an easy way to let go of our parents. And I mean, she complains about her mother sometimes. Okay, that's not a problem. Right. But if her mother's talking to her, she sides with her, right, or she gets an idea in her head... Don't trace it back to her mother-in-law. Because right. if you start arguing with her mother-in-law, then you start arguing with your wife, and your whole show and bias is going to be out the window. Are tough. Very tough. Very Big tough. challenge. Big. 100%. A husband should never try to distance his wife from her parents or argue with her about wanting to be with them. How often do we have to go to your parents? Why can't we go to my parents' house? Like we spend the holidays like this. It's a big problem. The woman is... I've seen the woman. She looks like... And you know why? Miserable, miserable. She's miserable. He's miserable. But do you know why that is? Why is she wanting to be with her parents more? Because she feels distant from her husband. She feels a disconnect. She feels a distance. She feels the distrust and the disloyalty from her husband. If he gave her everything like that, she wouldn't need to run back to her parents. Why is she relying so heavily on them when she needs to talk to somebody rather than giving you the time of day or asking for your opinion? There's something going on there we have to recognize what the problem is. Attempts to distance her from her parents can cause great damage to his relationship with her and destroy his own peace in the home. On the contrary, do your best to forge good relationships with your in-laws. Try super hard to make them happy when your in-laws come over for Shabbos and they sleep in your basement. Say, I'm so excited and so thrilled to have you in our home. That you can be around the grandkids, that you can enhance our Shabbos, instead of saying, You miserable piece of garbage, you're messing up every time, single time you come, everything, the word, word that comes out of your mouth is a problem, you're always complaining, you're always asking for everybody for everything, and undermining exactly what we have our routine of in the house. You want to say that to them, but you better not! This will enhance peace if you're good to them, love and unity between you and your wife. If her parents are far from Torah, don't observe the mitzvahs. He should consult a competent rabbi with outreach experience how to act with them while still being loving and caring and forging tremendous foundational faith relationships between you, your wife, your in-laws, your kids, and your house itself. With that, have an awesome, amazing rest of your day.